Hey, Mr. Gardeners, wow, I'm sure you were always taught about the wonder of worms. Didn't we learn that, how good they are at aerating the soil and how they break down the organic matter in your soil? Yeah, I love worms. I've even got my own little worm composter with my red wiggler worms and they're breaking my newspaper down into wonderful black organic matter. Well, in the news you might be seeing the news stories about a really bad worm that decomposes so fast that it's a danger to the woods. And they're called jumping worms and they're an invasive species from Europe. Even though none of our worms are really native here in this area of part of North America or the whole continent, because they, during the Ice Age they were all killed. Well, anyway, we've got this invasive one that's becoming more prominent, especially along areas where there's streams. Fishermen like this particular jumping worm because he moves so quick. So a customer brought me some jumping worms. Um, I'm hoping they'll jump for you. We're going to zoom in on, on him over here. Come, let's take a look. And hopefully... They're gonna jump for you. We've got some, a couple eight inches here. Come on, little buddy. Jump, jump. I've already dug most of them out of here. That one's kind of kicking a little. Where'd he go? Come here. Of course, they won't perform. Some of them I had in water for a really long time. But they jump and squiggle a whole lot. When you grab them, they tend to violently jump. He's not jumping too much. I had them in water for quite a long time as I was looking at them under the microscope. If you have them in your leaf litter, now these worms die in the winter months. They're not alive all year round for us here in part of Maryland. They die and they overwinter as cocoons. Let me show you a little easier way to identify. You know the head of the worm always by the clitellum, this little sort of a near the reproductive region? And this band is real white on the jumping worms. These guys are not jumping a lot because I've soaked them in water far too long. Let's look at this guy under the microscope. Well, let's let's see if we can zoom on him. You can clearly see the white band on him. That's a really good indicator. And that white band goes down around the whole circumference of that worm. Here's the big one. They go up to eight inches. I think I already said that. And there's all different ways to identify worms. You know, if you have earthworms, the butt end, the tail end of an earth, of a nightcrawler, they get real flat. They can flatten out on the end. That's how you can tell a nightcrawler. And plus, a nightcrawler does tunnels in the ground. And you'll see leaf litter where he doesn't eat the petioles of the leaf around in your yard. So you can tell the earthworm by his castings around his hole. This worm does not make tunnels in the ground. He just eats all the leaf litter in the top two inches of the soil and makes it look like coffee grounds that are left on the soil surface, eating everything. He's a vicious consumer. He consumes too much, and it actually changes the carbon sequestration. Is that how you say that word? In the forest, so it's changing that. There's a lot of negative characteristics. The organic matter is totally consumed on your floor, and he also affects the amount of invertebrates in the soil because of his consumption of, of the foods and things, there's not sufficient food for birds or for salamanders. So it changes the forest floor way too much. So what are you supposed to do as master gardeners? Like, do you have these? In Maryland, they're not asking you to submit information if you have them in your yard. In some of the states, they are asking those questions, but not here in Maryland. But what you should be careful of if you're out hiking, you should rinse your boots off when you leave a site so that you're not carrying those little cocoons, which are their eggs. You know, worms can reproduce without without having a partner. Um, they can reproduce. And so they get little cocoons or like little round cysts. They're black in color. This this worm makes a black one in color on the ground. Oh, there. Oh, look, there he is. He's, he's jumping. Did he jump for you? Oh, man, that's the best jump we've gotten yet since I was messing with them. But anyway, in the woods, wash your boots off. Make sure if you're buying potting material or you're doing compost, make sure these guys are not in it. You can kill them. I was floating these in water for about 20 minutes and that was sufficient enough to uh, remove them from the leaf litter. There are methods on the internet that you can look up that talk about putting mixing mustard with water, dry mustard, and then that would cause them to come to the surf surface and bring controls. But anyway, wash your boots off. Make sure you're not exchanging compost materials and pots that you're buying. Make sure they're not jumping around inside of there. And just try to do your part as a concerned citizen to not be spreading these invasive worms. There you go, Master Gardeners. New jumping worm facts.